So, welcome back to the final episode of Nise Monogatari. So, in the previous episode, a lot of things happened. So, we finally started at Skiki Phoenix arc. I guess we could say that because we finally met the Phoenix. Um, so, apart from the Phoenix, though, we definitely saw a big, big, big change in the pace because it was due to Yotsugi and Yozuru, right? That's it. Yotsugi, Yozuru. They ended up showing up and they are said to be exorcist that ha hunt specifically immortal oddities and right now as of right now the only oddities that we know of that are immortal are vampires and fin the phoenix right so those are the only two that we know of as of right now but they said you know what you guys are harmless you vampires you're like uh Ar Aragi is like a human now that's just has some remnants of the vampire power in him uh shinobu is a pseudo vampire who has barely any power left in, um, in her as well and so they're like you don't we don't need to do anything about you guys but the phoenix could be a problem so they ended up cutting the phoenix in half but she regenerated as a phoenix does so it's gonna be interesting seeing what they actually mean by her being like a con not artist but like her being just a fake person a fake um an imposter right an imposter as easy as that as the title of the season suggests, an imposter. So we'll see what exactly they mean by that. Uh, we'll see why the Phoenix, like what Skihi is actually dealing with and what the uh, Phoenix symbolizes and how to get rid of it. Uh, you guys also did clarify that it's not exactly the same. The relationship between Yotsugi and Yozuru is not exactly the same as Shinobu and Mime because the only thing that Mime did to Shinobu is he named her, right? But she was not his or she's not his familiar at all they're just like they just have this relationship where they live together for a bit that's it right and he named her uh, so they, they share the same uh, last name but that's it um so it's not exactly the same uh the relationship but it does give off similar vibes it's a um yeah i feel like it gives off a similar vibe they were still kind of a duo just like these two are um but yeah uh, you also did say that being an exor oh i think my camera shook a bit uh, being an exorcist is basically a new branch of what we saw right now kaiki was a con artist meme was a mediator and they are exorcists so it's kind of like in the same area but like a new branch just like those guys were so it's not a media they're not mediators that they're not con men they're exorcists um interesting i would have thought that oshino would have also or meme would have also fit the description of an exorcist but i guess he wasn't i guess being a mediator means he can't be an exorcist i don't know i thought he would be a mediator who's also an exorcist but maybe not maybe not because he exercised um the diet or the oddities right i don't know though uh i don't know the specifics of it uh either way i'm excited to see how this arc wraps up and then after this i think it's kuro monogatari or uh, neko monogatari kuro right i think that's the next one which to me sounds like it's gonna be more uh hanekawa which is always interesting to say the least but either way let's go into oh if you want to watch this uncut and unblurred it's gonna be on my patreon which is down in the description and without further ado let's go into nise monogatari episode 11. oh the slow version wait uh i'm gonna go back to the beginning this it's a slow version of platinum disco that's playing that's cool Oh, I heard about these fuckers. But the mother? 
様のご母道ということになろうお前様のご母道が15年以上前に体内ならぬ体内に怪異を宿したということじゃそして1年後に怪異を宿したということじゃそして1年後に怪異を宿したそう、they're saying that Tsukihi was always a phoenix, right? Or a cuckoo or whatever. Let's call it a phoenix.、Uh, so they're saying that she was always a phoenix from birth, but she got a scar that Aralagi said that when they went to the doctors, they said that that scar is gonna take a, like, basically it's never gonna heal. So that means that she got a scar and that scar was, did not heal all the way until they got to the doctors, but she ended up healing her entire body in like mere seconds earlier. So, wouldn't that scar like heal in mere seconds as well、eh, when she got it? If she were a phoenix all the way through her entire life? Or maybe she can control the healing or something like that? But I don't know. Or maybe her power, healing power got stronger by time? Wait. My brain is doing backflips. Let me read the lyrics. I feel like this is gonna. Okay, I, I, I'm not 100% sure of the lyrics. The only thing is,、uh, when she talked about eternity, that was like, that felt very,、uh, you know, very on point.、Um, I'm not sure how this is gonna play out, and I don't know how literal this is gonna end up being, right? Because they're saying that. I feel like I'm looking into it way too literally, because I feel like it's gonna be way more metaphorical than I'm giving it credit、uh, to be. But if we're looking at it. Like, from a more literal standpoint than not, then they're saying that a phoenix puts an embryo inside a womb, or like, yeah, it creates an embryo out of nothing inside a womb. So, if that were the case, then that would mean that the DNA wouldn't match with the mother or anything like that. But I feel, I feel like I'm watch, looking at it from way too much of a、um, literal standpoint. I feel like it's more, it's gonna be more to that. I wanna. I'm just gonna watch and I'm gonna make my theories after that. My brain is doing some weird stuff though. Oh, yeah. Yep, correct. Exactly that. <laughs> you seem like Kerberos. You suit the role.
現場に居合わせただけあってショックが大きかったみたいでさ今は2階で寝込んじゃってるもう月日ちゃんはあれで結構神経細くてナーバスだからな聞きたいこともあるだろうけどぐっすり寝入ってるみたいだからしばらくは起こさないでやってくれあいあいカレンちゃんWhat? <laughs> Bro, just because she's not your sister, she's an imposter. I mean, I guess, I guess what he was doing, but yeah, I get that he was doing that. But Jesus Christ. I mean, that's also one thing that I was thinking about is it doesn't really matter that much if like something like let's say someone gets uh, has, a, has a child with a person and then after that they remarry or they, I don't know, get like artificial insemination or something like that. Still, and they give birth to that child. Still, if those two uh, children grow up together, they're going to think of each other as brother and sister or uh, as siblings, right? It's not like it matters what kind of what happened、um, in the womb, right? As long as you like, you can even not be related by blood at all, and you can still grow up as relatives or as siblings, right? I don't know about that one. I feel like that's a bit different. Cutie. <laughs>、oh, I really like Skihi. A lot of development they got during this arc. The sisters. Aragi as well. Ah, I'm going to go. 
れないよ。時間を少し失うだけさ。さあ、月日じゃったか。あ、お前様の目標の妹。They really like Shinobu's feet, huh? Or they like feet in general. Ski he. Ah, and then he is fire, right? The feet, man. It is a very pretty name, though, Ski he. Whoa, she's in her angsty form. Wait, 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 before we go to the fight, um, do I have the theory down correctly that both Araragi and Shinobu get stronger when Shinobu drinks his blood? Because Araragi gets stronger the less human blood that he has, and Shinobu gets stronger the more blood that she drinks. So they kind of like, by drinking Araragi's blood, both of their power levels go up. Is that correct? I'm pretty sure that's correct, because... I'm, I remember Aragi getting stronger the last blood that he had when he was fighting Surga. Like, sh he let Shinobu suck out most of his blood just so he could get stronger, right? Uh, and Shinobu also gets stronger from that, because obviously she gets blood. So that's pretty interesting. They can, like, correlate the power levels. Wait, what? Oh, I thought it said, and then there's the former heart under Blade Yotsuki chan. I didn't see the end in between. Okay, that makes sense. Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> I'm not sure which one is better. Okay, thank you. Eastern demon with that post look of yours. Oh, my God! I love the banter. So she's close to him, huh? <laughs> what? 
<laughs> wow! Kaiki is not like 45? Of course. You know what's funny? Is even though I'm pretty sure this came out way before Sangatsu no Lion did, um, it's funny that he says the Shogi Research Club because that's basically the club that what there is in Sangatsu no Lion, and also Kaiki's VA is Shimada Kai, who is uh the shogi master right or he's not a uh, well that's spoilers uh spoiler territory so i'm not gonna go into what he is what he isn't but um yeah he's also playing shogi there that's really interesting even though yeah as i said i'm pretty sure this came out way before the manga of sangatsu dead um the occult club huh so i see they're just as useless as in any single anime that we've e that i've ever watched with the occult club they never do anything apart from play board games Interesting. So Kaiki is the same age. I would have said that Oshino is about 10 years younger. And also um, Yozuru as well, that she's 10 years younger than Kaiki. Man, life has not been easy for Kaiki, has it? Kaiki! Yes. Hey, I'm sure he got some good money off of it. Off of that information. So? Mm. <laughs> you do? Okay, okay. Ah! Oh, the eyeball! Dude, the animation! Mmm! Mmm! Ooh. 
Fuck me, man. I thought that he's... Is he even still immortal? I guess he is. Oh. That's the difference between a young demon and an old, old granny vampire. Dude, her VA, man. I love Araragi, man. That's a crazy power up that he got. Oh, disgusting, man. Oh, the eye socket. Oh! Well, that's kind of his specialty, though. Yeah, he's good at that. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Altruism, that's crazy. that a lot oh that's such a cool uh parallel to their characters isn't it oh the con artist choosing the imposter to be worth more her of course who's supposed to be like the side of justice the good guy choosing the um actual um the real deal as being worth more and oshino being the mediator choosing both of them to be of equal value oh such a cool parallel to their positions in the story it's so, so well written, man. Oh, 
まあ強いて言うならそれが今回の件からうちらが得るべき教訓ちゅうとこか10年越しの教訓やけどな<笑>帰るでうちらの負けや<笑>ンシュートバーバーノットワンデツネスティングチェックスアウトウェイソリーレミゴウォディダッドカーツサイダーアルブクモスリフィールドウィッドエクセプションズエクセプトウィッドノートライトエクセプトウィッドノートエクセプション <laughs> that being the exception. That's cool. That's a nice wording. A rule book mostly filled with exceptions. That's such a cool wording uh, of the sentence. Oh my god. It's almost paradoxical. That's cool. Yep. So tall, you know. Oh, that seems very out of character for her. That gave me chills. That's cool. Platinum Disco, you don't need to repeat it. Okay. Interesting. Interesting that he called Yotsugi a human like monster. I guess, in a broad spectrum, I guess she could be called that. Wait, did she have short hair? Her as well? I'll go back. I missed that. I'll be honest, I missed that. I was just jamming out. It's gonna need to grow on me. I'm gonna give it time. It's definitely gonna need to grow on me a bit more. But 
surely over time i'm gonna like it um uh, apart from Sinjuro Hara's hair wait no actually no why why the, is he just like, is Nisha Ishin just really, really, really into short hair? I mean, I can't blame him, but is that the reason why everyone has short hair? Um, which girls don't, like, still have long hair? Hachikuji, Shinobu, um, Yotsugi, Mm, Nadeko is like shoulder length, right? A bit over shoulder. Um, so everyone who's like really young has like long hair. And then everyone who's like above 14 is like, um, has short hair. Interesting. So Nisha Ishin, <laughs> you have an explanation for that? Um, <laughs> okay. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, um, disregarding the entire... Uh, Nisha Ishin fetish. Um, what a banger of a season. Wow. I absolutely... Okay. I know... I can see why it wouldn't be everyone's cup of tea. Because it definitely feels like it was a bit more... Is lighthearted the correct word? I don't, wouldn't even say lighthearted. I would say it was a bit more casual when it comes to like the entire... Like how much you have to think about all of the subtleties and stuff like that. Um, and I feel like it was a lot more focused on just some really witty dialogue and some really, really, really nice character growth um, when it comes to, like, Aradagi be definitely growing a lot as a character um, when it comes to, like, the Hachikuji stuff. Uh, and even if he still does stuff like that he does when he meets Hachikuji, um, at least still the fact that he at least took a step back and was, like, looked at it from, like, a third-person POV and I was like, you know what? The thing I'm, this thing that I'm doing may not be the coolest thing. Uh, and he at least thought about it and re-evaluated the entire thing. Uh, I feel like that was big for his character. And I feel like it wasn't just him, it was some other characters like Karen, like Tsukihi, um, that ended up growing as well in this arc. So that was great to see. And of course, the introduction of Kaiki, um, Yotsugi, and Yozuru was also fantastic. And yeah, I think this arc was just... Also, Shinobu, I think, was really nice to, like, establish this relationship between um, Shinobu and Araragi. Or to re-establish, I guess, um, ever since Kizumonogatari, to bring her back into the story. It was really well done. So, I thoroughly enjoyed Nisumonogatari. Uh, but yeah, I can see it was extremely, extremely... I don't want to say it was extremely fan service but it had a lot more fan service than some of the other uh, seasons. Um, but I don't think it was to its detriment. I feel like it definitely worked alongside it. Um, at some points, I was like, whoa. But um, I feel like most of the time, it worked really well with the story. Uh, and it kind of, every time that they did it, I feel like it was there for a reason. Actually, no. 70% of the time, it was there for a reason. Um, uh, the other 30% of the time, it was, was just like Nisho Ishin really liking feet. Um, which, you know what, fair enough. Um, but, yeah, it was a fantastic season. Fantastic season. I loved both of these arcs. I really liked the way they ended it. It was like, you know what? It's still family. Family is family. Uh, okay, one thing that I don't fully understand is what are the ramifications, or not the ramifications, but what is the phoenix supposed to be? Because I feel like I can trace basically every single... Uh, every single oddity that had like that was like latched onto someone, I feel like I could trace it back to some kind of thing, some kind of mental, either mental thing or just some kind of thing happening in someone's life, right? That manifested into an oddity. But with Phoenix, I can't really tell what that would be. So that's one thing that I'm confused about. And I know I saw um, like comments saying that not like not all oddities are necessarily metaphorical and stuff like that but i feel like every oddity up until now has been metaphorical um at least like it had some form of metaphor that goes that goes along with it of course there's a lot of supernatural elements to it as well it's not purely metaphorical but it has uh every single one had some kind of uh form of metaphor tied to it but i'm not sure what exactly uh the phoenix is supposed to be 
uh, I feel like the message of the arc was definitely that family isn't bound by blood, but by bond. And I definitely agree with that. Um, but yeah, also, I feel like it gives us an excuse that they're not blood related, even though they are. They would be half brother and sister then, right? I don't know. If you, it's like artificial insemination, right? You would still be um, blood related, but like it would be your half brother slash sister. Um, anyways, <laughs> that's way too much into technicalities. Um, but yeah, banger of a season and on to Kuro, no, Neko Monogatari Kuro we go now. Um, so hope you guys enjoyed because I thoroughly enjoyed it. So if you did, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in Neko Monogatari Kuro. Peace.